because we are going to welcome to the studio now uh, one of our guests for today, uh, Associate Professor Stephen Hoday from the University of Auckland. Uh, Stephen, good morning to you, sir. Are you with us, Stephen? Good morning, Pat. Uh, how do you do? Good to be very, aboard. Very, very, very well. Thank you. Can thank you, you so much me? for joining us today. We appreciate you uh, jumping on board. Um, look, the reason we've yeah, got you course. here. Yeah. Glad to be here. The reason we've got you here is international news coming out that uh, Nancy Pelosi is, well, it's it's said that it's going to happen, um, is going to be visiting Taiwan uh, in the first such trip for 25 years. Uh, let me just read this out for people. Uh, US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is scheduled to visit Taiwan, according to media reports, a landmark display of American support that triggered a diplomatic protest from Beijing. Pelosi will arrive in Taipei on Sunday following a visit to Japan, according to reports. Thursday in both Taiwan and Japan, including by Fuji News Network, which cited people it did not identify, it would be the first visit by a U.S. House Speaker since Newt Gingrich traveled to Taiwan in 1997. Sorry, that's a serving U.S. House Speaker. And um, yeah, I really wanted to have a, tr a chat with someone who could bring some uh, could broaden this conversation, Stephen, so thank you for coming on board again, as to really why this is such a big deal from both, uh, I guess, from the three parties involved, which is the US, maybe it's four parties, maybe it's the US, the world, Taiwan and China. So the floor is yours, sir. And, 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 and New Zealand, I should add. Yeah. And New Zealand. Now, we have to go back a step, Pat, and um, when you say Taiwan, we're really talking about a sovereign state called the Republic of China. It happens right. to be sitting right. on the island of Taiwan because the Republic of China government lost the civil war with the People's Republic of China, retreated to Taiwan, set up a democracy, became prosperous, and now there are 23 million people there who do not want to become part of the People's Republic of China with all the authoritarianism and the constrictions and the poverty uh, that that country uh, uh, requires. So uh, it is controversial in the sense that the United States has always supported Taiwan and the Republic of China because it is an alternative to um, the mainland government, which is communist, which is authoritarian, which is very constrictive, which is expansionistic. and has within the limits of the one China policy assisted Taiwan as in a kind of unofficial capacity as much as possible. Now, Nancy Pelosi is not the head of state. Yeah. She yeah. is going there in a less official capacity and as have many US officials in, in, a, in a capacity less than representing the sovereign United States. And this is permissible under the agreement made with the People's Republic of China that the United States would recognize Beijing as the one and only China, but that it would conduct affairs with Taiwan on an economic level, cultural level, diplomatic level, unofficial diplomatic level, uh, sporting level, and a number of other levels. So Nancy Pelosi, although symbolically she's a very important figure. Technically, she is less than a sovereign representative of the United States. Yeah. So what's the big deal then? I mean, like China has come out with some complaints yesterday and saying they didn't want to see it happen we yesterday our time. And they're, they're, it's actually China who's bringing the attention to this, making it seem like it's a significant act you seem to be saying because she's not, you know, the, the president, basically, it's not as important. Why is China worried about it at all then? Well, China's worried about every kind of contact the United States and New Zealand has with the Republic of China on Taiwan. The right. United States regularly sells very sophisticated military equipment, air, uh, uh, combat aircraft, uh, surface-to-air missiles, to name just two. And every time China objects, whenever a US official visits Taiwan, they object. Whenever the president of Taiwan visits the United States, they object. They regard Taiwan 
as a province of China, much like yeah. Russia regards Ukraine. They do not respect uh, uh, Taiwan's sovereignty or the will of the people expressed democratically in repeated elections. And therefore, any outside assistance to Taiwan or any attempt by Taiwan to join the World Health Organization, just to take one small example, uh, is objected to by, Taiwan, by, by Beijing. Now, New Zealand does conduct uh, uh, informal relations with Taiwan. There is a mm -hmm. Taiwan representative mm -hmm. office in Auckland and also one in Wellington. There is a trade relationship. Uh, Taiwan people come here and invest uh, in, in property. Uh, New Zealand has uh, some small businesses in, in Taiwan. And there is a New Zealand office. It's called a trade uh, and industry office. And Australia does exactly the same thing. In fact, they're both in the same building on different floors and they, they work closely together. So right. there is a, a, a vibrant relationship, but uh, uh, Beijing looks at this relation, these relationships with other countries and Taiwan with suspicion, feeling that uh, they're aimed to split Taiwan away from the mainland. Well, they're not wrong. Uh, it, it's already split. It's not splitting. It's it's just maintaining the current uh, separation of the two governments, each going its own way across a hundred miles of water between Taiwan and the mainland. Mm -hmm. So uh, each side has its point of view. I think the uh, New Zealand government is quite firm that the current relationship will continue. It's a good relationship for all concerned, except Beijing. And Beijing is simply wrong. I'm interested in the idea of, you know, China to Taiwan is very similar, if not the same, Russia to Ukraine. Now, um, the president, President Biden has said he will stand by and, and defend Taiwan should there be an attack by China. But America will stay out of Ukraine for the moment because they're not a NATO country. Why the difference, do you think? Why would America be happy to, to jump into the fraud, so to speak, to, to protect and help Taiwan? And I'm not saying they're not helping Ukraine, but certainly it would appear that they're more, they're more open to military intervention with Taiwan, but not with Ukraine directly. What, do, you, do you have an opinion on that? Well, look, that's a very good question, Pat. And I think your perception is, is one that's popularly uh, shared by many people. But uh, as an academic, could I just put a little bit of of, of, of uh, nuance into that. Of course, uh, please do. The, the phrase in both cases uh, being used now is strategic ambiguity. In other words, the United States is not going to specify exactly in, in figures what it will do because the circumstances are always fluid. They may change. The perceptions in, um, in, in Moscow and Beijing may be quite distorted and that um, the, the best deterrence, and, and the whole purpose here is to deter, not to fight, but to deter, fight if necessary, but deter is, is, is far preferable in both cases, uh, to deter uh, further aggression in uh, Ukraine or aggression against Taiwan. So the United States does have a law. It, uh, the law does oblige the U.S. president to give assistance to Taiwan if it is attacked. Okay, right. what is your definition of attack? What about yeah. a cyber attack? Yeah, what yeah. about taking one of the little offshore islands from away from Taiwan, which the Chinese could easily do? It wouldn't uh, affect Taiwan proper, but it would certainly be a symbolic blow. Uh, what if... Uh, there was um, overflights, which there already are, uh, threatening or a, some kind of uh, uh, potential blockade of Taiwan. Uh, what, what, what would constitute an attack? Well, the United States has been very careful not to define it, uh, nor uh, has Japan. Now, there's every expectation Japan would come in along the United States if it came to a major confrontation. Uh, the Japanese have a very close relationship with Taiwan. They, uh, they, they colonized Taiwan, but strangely enough, the Taiwan people like the Japanese. They built infrastructure. They were relatively benign uh, as colonists. 
And uh, at, at the moment, the uh, one of uh, Taiwan's closest uh, friends and trade partners uh, and mentors is, is Japan. So uh, again, China has to look at this and say, look, what, what actually will we confront if we did a, an invasion, a proper invasion, like the yeah. Nazis against Great Britain yeah. in 1940? What would, what would the United States do? And would Japan join in? Would South Korea join in? Would Australia and New Zealand join in and help the United States to resist the Chinese? Bringing, of course, World War III much more close. So mm. they, these are the kinds of somewhat messy, somewhat ambiguous uh, calculations that are taking place now. Yeah, I, it feels to me, and I'm, maybe I'm missing something, but it feels to me the, that Nancy Pelosi put herself in a little position of a, of a no-win situation. If she goes to Taipei, then she may cause an international situation with China which may affect trade, it may do some things. If she stops and backs down, then potentially her opposing uh, politicians in America will use that against her as showing weakness and deferring to an authoritarian state. I just wonder, I, I wonder if it will happen or not. I, I mean, I put my money on, it probably won't, but I guess we'll see. Look, we, we're going to have to move on a sec, but I did want to ask you one other thing, and I'm going to bring in some video for this as well. And um, I, it's one of those questions that I'm always interested as to why there is so much sensitivity around Taiwan and why in the political world, politicians don't seem to be able to just say, this is what I think. And I'll give you an example. I, in my podcast world, I had James Shaw on, you know, who in New Zealand is a left-wing politician. And I asked him bluntly about, you know, uh, Taiwan, China, is Taiwan a independent state? Is it a country? How do you say it? How do the Greens say it? And this is what he had to say. Well, we, we would say that ev that everybody on earth has the right to self-determination. Uh, yeah. So it, it's not really a question for me. It's really for the people of Taiwan uh, to, to determine for themselves. I mean, you know, I'm not kind of remotely qualified to put words into their mouths. Um, so that, that would be uh, the stance that we would take. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it there because we need to move on a little bit. But we went on, that went on for about two minutes of me trying to be polite, but saying, why won't you at least, you know, uh, answer the question? And it seems politically the world over that uh, maybe it's a little bit like before Ukraine criticism of, of Russia, that seems to be more prevalent now. Uh, but also in Taiwan, politicians have to play a game where they are seen to not support one side or the other. And I'm just wondering why that is. Probably to avoid being provocative. Um, China is still our trade partner, our number one trade partner. There's no need to, um, to uh, be like Australia and the United States, which have suffered uh, economic sanctions uh, from China. New Zealand has not suffered those economic sanctions. And uh, some would say, well, maybe New Zealand is putting trade and economic benefit ahead of morality. Well, they would be half right. Uh, New Zealand government is responsible for maintaining standard of living. China is important to that standard of living. Would it be moral for New Zealand to take a, a purist stance uh, and forego uh, a very good trade partnership and New Zealand become impoverished, relatively impoverished uh, as a consequence? So these, again, these are the consequences that politicians have to take into account. You and I can be quite forthright. Uh, we can say <laughs> China is, is wrong. Uh, Taiwan is right. Uh, we'll defend them to the death. Uh, but but we're, we don't have to pay. We don't have to make the decisions and, and pay the political cost that politicians do. So I, I, I sympathize with uh, James Shaw and, and Nancy Pelosi as well. They do what they can to... Uh, do the right thing without provoking uh, enormous costs and liabilities like uh, uh, like Biden doesn't want to provoke Russia into using nuclear weapons in, in yeah. Ukraine. And uh, to the rest of us, uh, more or less nuanced people, it looks like uh, mealy-mouthed um, indecision, obfuscation, uh, evasion, and so forth. Well, that's the nature of politics. Yeah, we're going to leave it there for today uh, from the University of Auckland Associate Professor Stephen Hoadley. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate your, your thoughts and views around 
this conversation, which I'm sure will be bigger next week, should Nancy end up going to Taiwan? Yes, keep in touch, Pat. Uh, good questions. I'm always happy to come on and say a few words.